Mike Lee. Good morning. Hello, CPAC. I couldn't be more excited or more honored to be with you today. And um, I can't think of a, a better way of celebrating freedom than to get together to talk about our founding fathers and to talk about the Bill of Rights to kick off this discussion. I want to tell you a little bit about the fact that the left, of, co of course, does hate the Bill of Rights. Why? Well, because the Bill of Rights talks about things that the government can't do. And that, to them, is like blasphemy. That's the absolute worst, because they want to use government. Let's talk a little bit about why the Bill of Rights was written and why it exists, why it matters, why it matters still today, especially today, especially now. Now, I don't have to tell you that we're, of course, facing a lot of problems as a country. We've got more problems than a math book right now. And most of those problems, a disproportionate share of them, come from government, and they're in need of solutions. We have division, we've got rancor, we've got a clamor of loud voices crying out in opposite directions all across the country. Those are the doomsayers who are predicting more gloom. Those are the skeptics doubting whether we can ever build a better future together. Those of the idealists claiming that we need to use government to build some kind of leftist utopia and those who are calling out for unity. And if there's one thing that all of them, and in fact, all of us, can unite around, it should be this, skepticism. Skepticism in government and faith in the people. You see, those two things work against each other, skepticism in government and faith in the people. If the skeptics need more skepticism, be skeptical of government. If the doubters need more doubt, be skeptical of government. If the hopeful need more hope, be skeptical of government. And if those who call for unity you really need something around which to unite, be skeptical of government. Because faith in government, and let's remember what government is. Government's not some holy thing. It's not some noble aspiration. It's nothing more and nothing less than the official collective use of force. It's just coercive force. And so faith in government means tyranny. You can't have faith in government without promoting tyranny. And faith in people means freedom. That, you see, is the absolute key to our, our founding and to our Bill of Rights. And it also happens to be precisely what the left is trying to undo. I also don't need to tell you that our fundamental freedoms are coming under attack more and more each and every day. In fact, in many ways, their sole agenda is putting more faith in government. And as a result, they take steps inevitably to make us less free. Anything that puts faith in government is wrong and lends toward tyranny. So how do they do this? Well, they do it by eroding the very same protections in the Bill of Rights that make us free. Now, th there are, of course, two main ways in which the Constitution protects our freedom. First, you've got the structural protections, the checks and balances, the manner in which power is split up. It's split up between state and local power on the one hand and between the three branches of the federal government on the other hand. Those are very, very important. But there's another set of protections that are substantive in nature, that amount basically to the thou shalt nots of the Constitution. In other words, the Constitution, as adopted in 1787 and ratified a couple of years later, 
had these structural protections, but it lacked something else. It lacked something that Richard Henry Lee, who was a founding father, described as, as those essential rights of mankind without which liberty cannot exist. Richard Henry Lee was worried that the original Constitution didn't have specific protections for those freedoms. And so within a couple of years, Congress got to work and we got the Bill of Rights. Almost immediately after they ratified the Constitution, they added this uh, series of 10 amendments, the first 10, a separate list of thou shalt nots to the government, things that the government simply cannot do with the express purpose of safeguarding liberty. You see, the Founding Fathers knew from sad, difficult, tragic experience under British tyranny that bad things happen when we allow too much power to accumulate in the hands of the few and in the hands of people who are not skeptical of government and in fact put their trust in it. You see, this is part of how British tyranny became so bad in the first place. People put an almost religious amount of zeal and support and yes, faith in the crown and therefore in government. That's not where it belongs. We know better as conservatives. So when human beings, any human beings, wield that much power with no controls around it, that inevitably leads to tears and worse. People do bad things with that power. They restrict people's speech. They restrict their ability to preach and live according to their religious beliefs and to petition the government seeking relief from the very abusive action taken by that very government. They disarm the populace. They unreasonably search and seize individuals at their homes, invading their personal privacy and seizing their personal effects without a warrant. This has happened in societies over and over and over again. And the one common ingredient, people put faith in the government and don't trust the people. And so, as a society, as a people, as a country, we made a choice with the Bill of Rights, a choice to prevent that kind of tyranny and to protect the freedoms we hold most dear, as only we the people can. You see, the Founding Fathers understood that ultimately, the bulwark of individual liberty must lie with the people themselves. It's not in government, it's in us. But that, you see, is, is why the Bill of Rights exists. And it's why government worshipers everywhere hate it. They despise it because we're telling them you can't do that. It's worth noting that the protections in the Bill of Rights are listed independently, separately, because each enumerated right is significant and should stand independent on its own it should, and it should always be honored. But we, we also can't overlook the fact that each of these protections also can work in concert together to protect liberty. And I believe that there's one freedom in the First Amendment that's central to all the others and is particularly worth highlighting today. It's long been said as I, I'm sure you'll hear today, that whether by accident or by divine design, our first freedoms are found in the First Amendment. Our freedoms of speech, religion, press, assembly, and petition. And perhaps the one that's least known, least appreciated, least celebrated, but from which all others draw their strength and ultimately depend in one way or another is our right to assemble, to do what we're doing right here today. <laughs> Freedom of religion depends on it. Core political speech is downstream from it. The right to petition government is bound to it. And the freedom of the press presupposes it. We can't do any of these things without the freedom to assemble.
And it's one of the main freedoms, not coincidentally, that's been severely restricted with the growth of government that's occurred during this global pandemic. We've been prevented from gathering in our churches, in our schools, and in our workplaces. In some cases, even from gathering in protest while seeking redress of our grievances. Whether knowingly or not, those in power have struck at the core piece that has the ability to cause the whole structure to collapse. And we're suffering the consequences. Just look at California. Sad, sad California. The people of California are recalling their governor because they've had enough of these stringent closures. They've had enough of the encroachment upon their rights and enough of the government telling them that they can enjoy a five-star meal at French Laundry with their governor, but they can't go to church. Of course, you can enjoy that meal there only if you can afford the $10,000 a plate entry price, but that's another issue. On the flip side, I'm so grateful to my friend Governor Ron DeSantis for keeping Florida open. <laughs> Government, of course, is itself able to assemble pretty darn well. You know, miraculously, in the midst of the pandemic and otherwise in places like Washington and state capitals and city halls, government officials allow themselves to assemble. They don't restrict themselves. This can seem intimidating to us as everyday citizens. Who are we, we might think, compared to those with massive consolidated power who, as we might see it, have all the say? But the beauty of our country, of our history, and of the design of our system of government. That's the power of ordinary citizens standing together. When one person realizes that he's not alone in his beliefs and finds another, and then another, and then a few more, that's how we end up with gatherings like this one, where the magic happens. And thank you, Matt Schlapp, for making this gathering happen. The nation and the world have been changed by groups of clear-minded, purposefully law-abiding Americans assembling together. It's how our country was born, and it's how we fought successfully to maintain our liberty thus far. And it's why we're here today. We're here today not because we have faith in government. We're here because we have faith in the American people. Those two work in opposite directions. It's only when we've got faith in the American people that things work. Our founders understood that at the end of the day, some of the most dangerous threats to freedom come from government itself. Because government is force. And in that respect, it's the opposite of freedom. They understood that government is ultimately the authorized collective use of coercive force, force that can be used against us, and so for that very reason, they sought to constrain it. They understood that in government there is a choice between liberty and tyranny, and there is this choice that is constant and relentless and binary. Tyranny, liberty, we got to choose which one pick a horse and ride it. We're here because we, as a group, choose liberty. We're here because we believe, we understand that government works for us and not the other way around. We're here because we trust the people and are skeptical of government. That, my friends, is worth uniting around. I believe that if we understand these principles and we continue to talk about them, we can unite around them. We can 
We must, and together, assembled, we will. Thank you very much.